Who does he remember from, uh, what's the name now? Fiat, Fiat Chrysler. Chrysler. I'm, I'm still right. getting used to the, to the new name. Um, but uh, yeah, he's the product manager or the general manager for this new 300, right? The Chrysler 300. Yep. One of the most iconic cars for the brand, right? Yeah, absolutely. So the Chrysler 300 uh, has a great history uh, with us. So uh, launching it this year, we wanted to build on that great tradition that we have. Yeah. So um, different models, as always with this car, we were like at the top of the line. Actually, this is our S model. So we have four. Uh, there's the Limited. This is the S model. We have a C and then a C Platinum is the top of our price class range. So the S model really, uh, with exterior and interior differentiation, really kind of appeals maybe a little bit more to the youth buyer. It's got a little bit sportier, edgier look to it with black accents on the exterior, black accents on the interior. A little bit of a sportier ride as well. Yeah, it seems to me like you've been a little bit more aggressive with the design of this particular model. I mean, like. The previous generation probably didn't have like the black grill and all those kind of things, right? Uh, actually, the previous generations did have some blacked out. I don't think it was as prominent as it is okay, now. Okay, yeah, with maybe the, with that's the, what I'm with, noticing. Yeah, yeah. With, the, with the piano black and sp certainly specific colors, it really seems to pop a lot more. But we've all, since we launched the S back in, I think it was 2010 model year, we really wanted to try to differentiate it as more of a little bit nod to the sporty. So we've tried to make sure that from an exterior and interior perspective that we can go ahead and differentiate that. Yeah. But uh, I, I'm assuming, like, we just had a presentation with the Southern Automotive Media Association, and some of the questions were, like, immediately, how can engine this thing? I mean, a lot of people get really enthusiastic about, I mean, the technology that Fiat Chrysler Group can develop, and, like, this car, so. Yeah. No, and obviously, yeah, the question comes up about the Hellcat. Um, obviously, that's uh, re reserved for our SRT models, yeah. derivatives. Uh, the, the engine and transmission lineup we have in this car really meets the needs of what our consumers are looking for. So with the V6 engine at 292 horsepower, or if you get the S, it's 300 horsepower, with, coupled with the eight-speed transmission, there's plenty of horsepower and torque. And then for those people who want more of a sportier kind of uh, uh, ride, you can get the, the V8 Hemi at 365 yeah. horsepower. But there's no SRT division now in Chrysler, right? Because now so that all those are served for Dodge? In, in select overseas markets, there is a 300 SRT model. Oh, okay, but not but for it's the very, States. It's, you're correct, it's very minimal. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, so 2015, this car was launched just in January, right? In how, January. how are you guys doing with the car? Uh, we're doing great. Obviously, we've uh, gotten through the sell down. So when you launch a car, you have to sell down the old model, intro the new model. So how long does that generally take? I mean, you were doing really good with the old one still, right? Yeah, we were. We had a great 14 uh, calendar year sales wise from a 300 perspective. So you know, it depends upon sales rate and how many units you have on the ground and inventory, all that kind yeah. of stuff. But uh, we're in a position now where I'd say roughly. 90% uh, of our overall inventory is 15 mile a year, which is great for us. So uh, we're obviously making sure that we're getting out in front of all the journalists and all, all consumers and the dealers to educate everybody on what we've got to offer for 15 mile a year. So what's new in this car for the previous generation? Uh, what's new? So from an exterior wise, we'll start there. We've got a new front and rear fascia. So we've got a different look, a little bit bolder of a, a grill. We've widened it. We've heightened it. Um, uh, on this model specifically, like I said, there's black accents on the exterior. We've added forward LED lighting with LED fog lamps and yeah. LED daytime running lamps. On the rear, we've added um, new exhaust tips, trapezoidal designed exhaust tips. We've got and those different. I'm sorry, different from uh, it, from the S model and then the R trims. No, are... it's consistent across okay. the, the yeah. lineup. Uh, we've got L new LED tail lamps. So, we've, like I said, we've got forward and rearward LED lighting. Um, from an exterior perspective, uh, really obviously maintain what's core to the car is that kind of chiseled shoulder design yeah. on the sides, which we, again, one of the top purchase reasons from our consumers is the exterior styling. So really kind of took the design back to that big, bold American sedan that we've been known for with the Chrysler 300. Interior-wise, we've made a lot of updates, upgraded the leathers, upgraded uh, interior materials. We've got a standard 8.4-inch touchscreen, which is the largest in its class. Which I love. I mean, like, this system from the Chrysler Group is the best in the business, I think. Yeah, we've... In we've, terms of usage and, like, how you can control everything, it's really amazing. Yeah, it really is. We're getting a lot of great feedback, and obviously the consumer feedback is it's easy to use, and that's what you want. Exactly. So, that's, a, that's the main thing, I think. Exactly. Because when you start bringing more and more technology to the car, you need to make sure that it's it's that you can understand it and exactly. take advantage of it, right? Exactly. So new rotary shifter, that's new for us. So like I said, kind of frees up some console space. Yeah. Uh, also just a, a hint of refinement. Um, we've got a new 
a seven inch driver information display between the speedometer and tachometer. It's customizable. So if you're familiar with the, the Chrysler 200, yeah. uh, we've taken the technologies that we've launched in that car and kind of brought it forward into this car as well. So um, like I said, panoramic moonroof, it's the largest in its class. We've got the largest leg room in its class. So as we updated the car, we wanted to make sure that we maintain the kind of the core DNA of what the car is for our buyers. They seek ride and handling. They seek interior spaciousness and roominess, seat comfort. And those things are important, so we want to maintain that as we're updating the car. Yeah, and a lot of uh, new materials, right, in the interior. I mean, everything feels yep. like really, really exactly. high class. Exactly. Upgraded materials, piano black accents here. Um, when you in the C Platinum model, we have a leather wrapped IP. We've got okay. leather wrapped door inserts as well. We've got on that particular model, we've got uh, quilted seat inserts, ventilated seats. Um, so again, for the consumers who uh, are looking for this type of vehicle, uh, we feel that we're we're, we're kind of um, spanning the spectrum, so to speak, of the consumer. So we have a limited, which starts at thirty one five seventy, comes with heated. Uh, standard heated leather seats, uh, which I challenge you to find that in the yeah. rest of the class at that price, yeah. right? Not that we need it in Miami today. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need that in Miami today, you're exactly yeah. right. But then a sport model, which it's not to the sporty buyer, and then when you get into the C and C Platinum, there's really kind of some of those surprise and delights and those luxury uh, appointments of the quality and craftsmanship story that you normally wouldn't see in this class of vehicle. Exactly, and speaking of this class, I mean, very competitive segment, right? I mean, right. like, there's a lot of good cars in this segment. Absolutely, you look at the, the segment that we compete in, there's obviously Ford, Taurus, Chevy Impala, Toyota Avalon, Nissan Maxima, Buick LaCrosse, Hyundai Genesis, I mean, those are just the name. And even some of the Europeans, they're coming down with their prices and they're like trying to match up with this and they're trying to get your consumers like for a lower price, right? Yeah, absolutely. There's some of that, that going on as well. And as we, you know, enter the marketplace, not only we have about our core competitive set, but we need to make sure we understand what the, what I would say the premium entrants in the segment are yeah. doing, such as the BMW 5 and 7 Series and the Mercedes-Benz E-Classes and C-Classes. So you just want to make sure that, because when you get up into that $40,000 range, which we are on our C Platinum at 42395 That full, stops? 42 something? 42395 is a C Platinum starting MSRP, and it just comes with a whole slew of equipment. So when you get into that type of vehicle at that price, your customers expect certain things. Yeah. But also, I mean, when, when, when we compare the prices and what you get for the car, for 42, you get all that all that you get offer here and it's, it's in some cases it's even more than other brands offer as a standard model and there are options on top of that it makes it really more expensive correct absolutely so like I said when you look at our the case of our limited at 31570 you get standard leather heated seats 8.4 inch touchscreen there's a lot of things that you get that you don't find in the other competitors until you get to you'd spend a lot of money on options to get to similarly equipped the vehicle so the 300 debuted originally 60 years ago, right? Uh, roughly correct, yes. And then uh, what happened? It just went out of uh, production because it came back like in the 2000, right? Yeah, 2005. Yeah, uh, we, we, I guess we uh, yeah. relaunched it and then uh, we updated obviously in 2011 and now we have an update here in 15. Yeah, so um, excited to have it back. We've got great feedback. Like I said, we're getting a lot of consumers uh, coming from outside of our brand lo looking in because of the, the styling of the car and what the car means and what its heritage, uh, which is great. And that's, if you look at our customer base, that's, they're very excited about the car from a design perspective and the heritage yeah. perspective. And so it's good that we're getting a lot of conquest sales. So the evolution of the 200, uh, has that, I mean, that car was like completely, radically changed. I mean, like, I don't know how many thousands of times more improved than the previous generation. Does that have has some impact into like this car because people are coming to maybe see the 200 and like they know how good it is now and they see this one, oh, this is like even better. Correct, yeah, when you launch cars in, in your portfolio, yeah. regardless of what segment it is, you have to be cognizant of what the other vehicles in your portfolio have and what, when when is an appropriate time to make sure that you update because you don't want to have a 200 in the marketplace that is better contented than a, than a higher yeah. price class car right so yeah I mean as I mentioned a lot of the 200 equipment that was launched on that car for example a lot of the safety features when you get forward collision warning and the blind spot monitoring those types of systems we didn't have in the prior generation we were able to pull into this car to make sure that we have a consistent look within the portfolio so when you climb in to our portfolio from a 200 perspective 
and you grow on that car and you decide you want to upgrade potentially to get into a full-size car in a 300 you're gonna find the same equipment yeah well, great car, congratulations, and um, I don't think you get you need the lock to sell it because it's like a great product, so thank you for selling it so. Yeah, for sure. Thank you very much.